Welcome to the No More Meds podcast with Dr. Corinne Weaver. Are you stressed out because you keep getting sick and don't know what steps to take? Are you sick of not getting answers from your doctor and always needing to take drugs? How would your life be different if you were healthy? Be inspired and stay tuned for some practical solutions for healthy living. Welcome to the No More Meds podcast. I am so excited to be here with a special guest today, Michael O'Connor. Thank you so much, Michael, for showing up for the No More Meds podcast today. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Before we get started, um, I'll tell you a little bit about Michael. I think uh, when we meet, when we meet was about six years ago. Yeah, probably so. I was was trying to think about that this morning. And I remember having you um, as a guest speaker at my office and most everybody thought you were a doctor. (laughs) You know, I'm sure you get that a lot, right? You know, Dr. Michael O'Connor. Yeah. But you've been in the functional, I mean, medicine. I mean, you've been that, you've been doing that for about six years. So we kind of met right at the very beginning and you focus on stress, which we're going to talk about really heavily today. Um, you talk about a lot about the heart, heart and GI conditions and autoimmune and throughout the years, you've noticed diseases have become, what are they becoming more complicated? (laughs) That's what you said, much more complex, you know, and I know that you're excited about being on the show today and you work with, I don't know, thousands of doctors in the Carolinas. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, how I got into ortho molecular, and I don't know if you've heard this story before is I was actually at a seminar in Texas. And I was having, most people know me, I'm like the sick kid with the allergies and asthma and all of that. And, and so I was in a new environment. And so my allergies were bothering me. And my good friend, Dr. Steve Conicello, which we're going to have on the podcast soon, he handed me this bottle of natural dehis. And I was like, what? I hadn't heard of this before. And so I popped some, you know, natural dehis and immediately I could tell a difference with my allergies. And so I just thought the company just sold natural dehis. So I got on the phone literally that day and I was like, I need to order, I don't know, 45 natural dehis. And, um, and so I kind of ordered them and moved on with my life. Right. And then here comes Michael walking through the door. So that's kind of how we started our relationship. And um, you just been phenomenal in the fact that your company is really good about education. So that's why I thought Mm -hmm. it was very important to have you on the show today. And today we're going to talk about stress. Stress. (laughs) Um, And I have to say that my listeners um, right now have been under a little bit of stress. I mean, it's 2020 and, you know, the year started out in January is exciting. And then as February, March kind of came along with the virus, and if people are not educated, Michael, as much as I have done shows and I've spoken around the world about breathing and about just education on natural health, we still are like in a population where we don't understand immunity. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, before you get into stress, I want to share one more story. Um, I was actually with an immunologist about four years ago. And again, I was suffering with a little bit of my asthma and allergies. And he was telling me how important it is to know the um, immune system, but also to know the stress system, your adrenal system, because they kind of interact together. And I was like, I'm doing everything right. I was taking my natural DHS. I think I was taking like six a day. And I was doing things um, for my immunity, you know, vitamin C, as we know, zinc, as we know, all these things that help our immunity, vitamin D, vitamin A. And, and I was telling him my long list of supplements and I was still not getting better. And he looked at me and he was like, do you think the cause could be some stress? And I was like, well, of course, none of us have that. You know, and at the time I was dealing with a lot of stress and he's like, well, why don't you take some adaptogen herbs? And I was like, of course I didn't think about it. And this is like a well-known immunologist at Chapel Hill. I really respect him. And we had a really good conversation. We ended up having lunch that day. And he went over how important it is to get your adaptogen herbs and get your stress under control to help your immune system. Have you heard about that, Michael? I have. <laughs> I have. You know, I think, I think with um, adaptogens, you know, I like to look at them as stress buffering agents, right? So if you know you have high high amount of stress and you have high cortisol, it's gonna help bring you down. You know, if you get to the point where you're overly stressed, you know, adaptogens kind of help bring you up because you, you're feeling fatigued. So adaptogens are, are definitely huge in, in my world and what I love to talk about. Oh yeah, so let's get into that. So yeah, so I 
I had a bottle of adapted, adapt and all. I believe that's what it was at the time. And it was about four years ago. And I was like, I never really tried adapt and all. Let me give it a try. And literally the next day, it's almost like what the natural DKS did for me earlier. It was the adapt and all that turned the shift around. And I was able to get over my asthma and allergies, little you know, thing that I was going through. And that hit me really hard that I was not addressing the stress component of the immune system. So I know you guys have come up with a whole new program, basically. I mean, I know you've had yeah. some products. Um, and how long has OrthoMaclecular been around? I mean, you know, vitamins come and go, companies right. come and go. And um, staying along, you guys have been, um, well, I mean, obviously you know more about the company. How long has it been? It's been 31 years. It's been 31 wow. years for us. Yeah, and you're exactly right. When you think about the way the supplement industry and the landscape is, I mean, it changes, you know, if on a yearly basis because someone tries to come up with this, you know, hot new product um, and it, it fades out because it doesn't work. And I think for us, you know, one of the reasons we've been around for 31 years is because of, you know, the stability that we have to look at science first. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, the, the clinicians that we work with appreciate the most is we don't just formulate a product because it's hot, because it's sexy. We do it based off of what the literature says to help get the patients better. And I think that that's always been our core. And if we stick to that, um, you know, that's, that's really going to help us, you know, to 40 years to 50 years and, and so on. And you're a pretty small company too, right? And, and not only do y'all stand on your products, I mean, if there's something that went wrong, I remember um, there was something that wasn't as organic as you guys liked it or something. And you're like, okay, we're going to have to, you know, return that and change this out. And, and so your company is not only, um, you know, small, but it's like high quality. It's very trusted. You mm -hmm. know, the products that are in that bottle are, are the products that are in that bottle. And I know you guys, and like any other company, really struggle with Amazon. You know, when Amazon a few years ago was like, hey, we're going to sell everything and then include it in vitamins. And, you know, we couldn't trust. And I was telling my patients, like, you can't go to Amazon and buy an orthomolecular product and it trusts that it be orthomolecular because who knows mm -hmm. who put whatever in it, you know. And you guys kind of had to fight that for a while and just like the other good you know, quality companies, but, you know, so as we go into talking about, you know, sh you know, stress and uh, the adapt and all products, do you know how long that product's been around? That's been our line for, you know, the, um, it, it, we, we have the programs, which you're familiar with, um, which is, you know, a lot of education based and you can tie products into it. And so the ARC program, which used to be called the adrenal recovery kit, that was launched maybe 12 years ago. That was our first program. And like you just said, we just, we just revamped it, renamed it. It's now the SOS program, um, which, you know, with stress, I mean, everyone needs to be, needs to be safe. <laughs> the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, that's, you know, I'd say uh, um, Adaptal Adrenal Adrenovive, those products have been our line for probably 12 years, maybe longer um, than that with maybe a couple of tweaks here and there as the, as the data changes. So. And I love your education, your education mm -hmm. line. I mean, not only do you have like DVDs and books that I've read that you've given me, um, that helped me write the No More Meds book. You know, some of that I took, you know, some of that literature and reference, you know, so. Yeah, um, I think, I, I say, I think that that, I think that, um, you know, we put a lot of effort into that educational piece to it. Um, not only do we want to help educate clinicians and help provide tools, but we also want to help educate patients because one of the, one of the things that we realized, um, you know, seven or eight years ago is there's a lot of people, all, you know, online. Now you talk about Amazon being such a big um, place that people buy, whether it's supplements, clothes, you know, groceries, um, you know, the internet is obviously a huge component of everyone's lives nowadays <laughs> right. and that can cause stress, but um, you know, people go online because they're interested in learning more about stress and adaptogens and things of that nature. But, you know, are you getting, you know, good information from the people who are writing these blogs. And what we're finding is that a lot of the information isn't accurate and people aren't qualified. You know, it's not someone like yourself who's, you know, working with patients every day and looking at literature and research and, and educating yourself. It's just people who do it as a hobby and they're giving you know, misinformation out there. And so that was another component of this whole lifestyle program that we wanted to provide is let's provide patients education that we know is accurate that can help them in their everyday life as well as educate them on 
on supplements. Yeah, and it being a good, reliable source. Where can patients um, or just anybody go and find those reliable sources you're talking yeah, so, about? Yeah, so we definitely work through you with that. I think that that goes back to what we do with supplements as well. We, right. want, to, we want to flow through the, the clinician, right? We want to flow through the doctor um, because at the end of the day, you're the one who helps manage all their, um, you know, all their health issues. And so if they want education, we can definitely provide that to you. It's more... You know, we pass it along to you and then you distribute it um, to the people who need it um, is, is that's probably the best way to, to go about it. Well, especially today, you know, since, you know, we're going to have some people that are been more interested and they can always reach out to me and, um, and then we can rely, you know, have reliable sources that you, that you give yeah. us. And, you know, I don't know, you've kind of got familiar recently with the Dutch test, correct? Yeah. yeah. So, um, and is it your company that kind of worked with the Dutch test to kind of not only bring, um, kind of an enlightenment to help doctors when they see certain pathways, um, mm -hmm. close or open, um, when you're looking at the Dutch test. And if you're not familiar with the Dutch test, um, the Dutch test is an, is basically an adrenal test that you can check your adrenals, your cortisol levels, all different kinds of hormones. Um, and it's a test that you can do at home. You know, you do it in your urine. You know, I actually yeah. just I actually just performed it about a month ago because I was really interested. Here I am, you know, telling my patients they need to get it done, and um, and I love going over the Dutch test with them and help them understand the pathways of you know estrogen, testosterone, you know, um, how the cortisol levels are, and how you can glutathione detox. And I know I'm already <laughs> losing people just talking these terms, but. <laughs> Um, you know, so I just, I just, cause the, the Dutch test alone is like, I don't know, 14 pages long. Yeah, it's, it's, insane. <laughs> it's, it's insane. It provides and so patient, much good information though. <laughs> yeah. And the patient's like, okay, what does this mean? And what am I supposed to do with all this information? But, um, and so anyway, I just got mine back uh, a couple of weeks ago and I found out, which I already kind of know I'm a bad detoxer, Michael. Okay. I said it. Yeah. I'm a bad detoxer. <laughs> My body does not detox well. And so um, hitting on the glutathione and hitting, and you guys have an amazing product, um, the L-glutathione. You want to yeah. tell us a little bit about glutathione and um, how you guys um, kind of, because that's a fairly new product. Glutathione. It is. It is. You know, glutathione has been around for a really long time and it's used um, in a lot of different areas and help, you know, really as your, as a, as a main antioxidant, help as an immune booster, uh, energy support. Um, and so there's, I, I think glutathione is, is, is something that everyone should be taking because our body needs so much of it. Um, but we were always the company who, um, you know, always continue to say use N-acetylcysteine because N-acetylcysteine NAC is a precursor to glutathione. Right, right. And, and I think what happens sometimes in our industry is the, the supplement industry tries to steal from the pharmaceutical industry. Where it's like, how can we come up with, you know, these sexy ways to deliver a product, right? So you have liposomal, you have phytosomes, you'll do, you know, black pepper with turmeric to increase absorption, people say. Mm -hmm. And we never saw any data that supported, um, you know, liposomal actually being more beneficial and um, than, than just providing someone NAC. You know, people are, mm -hmm. are we're trying to show studies, but we really didn't see... Um, them being as very accurate, to be honest. There's a lot of times in studies, marketing comes into play and you can, you know, change the sample of it per se. Um, and so for us, we finally, you know, found a company that we trusted, that we partnered with that showed that we could just provide uh, glutathione without it being liposomal and, and really get the, the benefits that we're looking for. Because as you, as you provide someone a liposomal um, glutathione, it actually, in the most basic sense, I guess is how I'll explain it is, it when you when you put in that aqueous um, that aqueous solution, it can break down the glutathione almost into fragments or oxidize it, and your body has to put it back together essentially to then get the benefits out of it. Why do we want to do that when we can just provide your body glutathione, and mm -hmm. it can utilize it from there? And the most and that is the very most basic form, and we can get a lot deeper than that. But um, you know that's essentially well, I mean, that's with essentially glutathione. What it is we always thought that um, you had to get through IV, 
you know, mm -hmm. for many, many, many years. And that was kind of the only way to get glutathione. Mm -hmm. And so if you were to get glutathione and go get an IV, it cost you 150 bucks, you know, each time. And you need, you need to do that, what, three or four times a week, you know, yeah, or, exactly. or every day. Right. Yeah. And so it just wasn't cost effective to have to go in and get glutathione, you know, um, you know, for that. And, and if people don't know what glutathione is, the highest antioxidant that our body really makes on its own, right? So you're talking about the NAC and the NAC, doesn't that help your body make glutathione? Is that it kind does. of the it helps. point? Yeah, and acetylcysteine's got to help almost, it, since it converts to glutathione, it's got to help replenish endogenous glutathione, right? And that's, I think, what we want to, to help do um, the most in our body is we're supplementing um, different things because maybe we can't produce it right now or we have low levels. Um, you can see it through, like you said, the Dutch test and things mm -hmm. of that nature. But um, what we also want to do is work on how can we, how can we start replenishing kind of that, those endogenous, um, you know, glutathione or whatever it may be. So then we can eventually come off the supplements. Our body can, can work without having to take a supplement every single day. Right, exactly. Uh, and, and that's the, the main goal. Um, so, you know, learning that about myself, I mean, actually, my hormones didn't look too bad. Um, they were all within normal. And, and if you want to see my Dutch test, uh, uh, just uh, ask me and I'll share it with you guys. Um, but yeah, so overall, the hormones were pretty balanced, but you could mm -hmm. tell um, my methylization, I have some, I have the MTHFR thing. And um, we won't get into that because that'll be a whole other podcast. Genetic right? snips are a whole <laughs> other rabbit hole that we can yeah, go down. A whole rabbit hole. Yeah, so I wasn't taking glutathione on a regular basis. So I started as soon as I got my um, Dutch test back a few weeks ago and a huge difference in energy, which I didn't really think uh, glutathione would give me energy, but I can tell a difference with taking it. And so mm -hmm. it's been on my regimen now, taking it daily and um I've even read some studies with the uh, COVID-19 that uh, having glutathione on hand. Yep. So I've been encouraging people, if you don't need it right now, you might need it in a crisis mode. Um, and that's how I've always worked with my autoimmunity patients. If they're overall feeling pretty good and then they start having autoimmunity, you know, symptoms, I'm like, make sure you got some glutathione, maybe mm -hmm. just do that for a week or two, kind of pull your body out of that crisis mode. And then you know, kind of get back to where your autoimmunity is not under attack. And that's kind of how I've used glutathione in the past. Yeah, I think that's perfect. I think, you know, in some of the studies too, it's showing how glutathione can increase natural killer cell activity, right? Mm -hmm. So really kind of help mm -hmm. protect the body, really, um, you know, important component of that immune response, right? And so I think more and more people, when you look at, you know, whether it's COVID, you look at patients who have autoimmune disease, um, glutathione is becoming more and more of a staple. Right. So let's get back talking about the new stress um, mm -hmm. supplements that you have that I haven't tried, but I have given out and I've uh, advised people to do is, you know, cause some people don't get the results that I get with adaptinol. I'll like, cause I think, Oh man, I take adaptinol. It changed my world. And I'm like, well, let's try it for you or whatever. And they're like, I don't see any difference. And I'm like, hey. you know, um, and then, but you guys just kind of came up with true adapt that has holy basil in it. So let's talk a little bit about that. But I have noticed that when people don't respond as good to adapt and all, they respond really well to the true adapt. So yep. tell me how you guys found out about the holy basil and kind of incorporating that into that product. Yeah. So really, when you look at, um, let's go big picture first, mm -hmm. and then we can kind of go into the product. When you think about just stress in general, right, you know, we break it down. There's really four key stressors. Um, that we need to look out for. And that's going to be blood sugar imbalance, inflammation, um, you know, sleep disturbance or insomnia. And then what everyone thinks about is the mental and emotional side of stress. And, you know, we can cover, you know, blood sugar and insomnia and, and um, inflammation. We can cover that later if you want to. But when it boils down to it, everyone has some type of mental, emotional stress, especially in 2020. Um, I think every single month, like something new pops up. And we have to deal with that stress. And so when we looked at, you know, holy basil and, um, you know, adding that into the formula for some people, because mentally emotional is such a big component of the stress response, holy basil does a really great job of acting as like another adaptogen, right? Not only is holy basil considered the mother of all herbs, but it acts as another adaptogen to help buffer that stress 
And on top of that, when people are stressed out, what are some of the things that happen? Your mind starts racing or you lose, you know, some memory. You don't have the concentration because your mind is wandering and holy basil really helps more with like that cognitive function. So we're not only going to help from a cortisol response standpoint, but we're also going to help, um, you know, almost like a nootropic in a sense, it's going to help with that cognitive function, that memory recall, um, things of that nature. So you feel like you're still sharp in times of stress. And I think that's, oh, that's why people start to feel the difference. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, if you don't have a healthy brain, <laughs> then you don't have, uh, it's kind of hard to focus throughout the day, right? When you're distracted. Exactly. And like you said, you're having that race in mind everywhere. And, you know, when we look at blood work, as I think most, I would say most integrated doctors, when we're looking at blood work, we're, the first thing I, I look for is actually blood sugar stabilization. I mean, because so many people have that problem, like you were talking about, like one of the four stressors. And a lot of people forget about that. I mean, if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic or hypoglycemia, I mean, obviously you're gonna, your body's under more stress. And so um, you talk about the cortisol levels and insulin and how all that kind of works. Um, but that is a big component. And if we don't uh, you know, handle the blood sugar. And one of my good friends, Dr. Kessinger, he always talks about um, when you're looking at blood work, you, you, we call it bail them out, bail them out. And B is blood sugar. Um, a is anemia. And we have this little, you know, yeah. little rhythm that we can go through. And B is always like, he's like, if you want to bail them out, you start with B, you start with blood sugar. Um, and you put them through blood sugar boot camp, you know, and, um, and I was like, I first like learning this for so many years and hearing him saying it over and over and over again, I never really got the concept until understanding the cortisol and insulin thing. And I was like, well, no wonder you have to balance out blood sugar because you can't get anywhere. You can't start with M, which bell, bell him out is like M was like the methylization or genetics. Mm -hmm. Don't even go there, you know, if like your A1C is eight, you know, like just forget right. it. So you gotta, you gotta get the, the blood sugar uh, thing stabilized first. You, you do. And it's that. such a, it's such a tricky thing. I almost think of it as a roller coaster, right? So, you know, you eat, you know, high carb breakfast or lunch, whatever it may be. Um, and what's going to happen is when your blood glucose, your blood sugar spikes, your pancreas is going to what? It's going to secrete insulin. And if it secretes too much insulin, then now all of a sudden you're on that downward curve, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like you're, you're, you're climbing, the, climbing the hill or the, for the roller coaster, then you all of a sudden drop off. What happens with people? They get tired. They feel like they're, um, you know, hitting that, you know, 11 a.m. lull or that 2.30 p.m. lull right after lunch. And so they, you know, get a sugary snack and all of a sudden we're climbing that hill again, drops. Um, and even when you think about the cortisol response, um, cortisol is used to help balance out kind of blood glucose. So if cortisol is always being, because you're on this roller coaster, cortisol is always being activated. Um, you know, that obviously plays a huge role in the stress response and how much cortisol you're going to have left for mental, emotional stress and things of that nature. So the, the drip is always on in a sense or the faucet is always dripping, I guess I could say. Um, but I would definitely tell people to start with blood sugar. And it's, it's funny, it, you know, kind of what you're talking about. We've known each other for six years. Um, I remember the first time I came to your office, I walked in and it just smelled incredible. And you guys were in there cooking. Oh, okay. Like we're yeah, teaching right. people, we're teaching people how to eat healthy. And I was like, Oh my gosh, they get it. This is right. where it starts is if you're not eating, you know, the foods that you should be, you're not eating a well-balanced, you know, you know, lunch, dinner. I know people like to fast a lot now. Um, but if you're not, if you're not doing the right things and you can't control your blood sugar, then that's going to throw everything else off. Yeah, exactly. And then you're going to be taking a lot more supplements. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, you know, some people, they, they, I mean, they love powdered drinks and I'm okay with powdered drinks. You know, I'm like, you know, I mean, your powdered drinks, Glycema Core is like one of my favorites, you know, yeah. and I don't, and I don't have blood sugar issues, but I just love Glycema Core, right? Who doesn't, if you've ever tried it before. It's so good. And, but I'm like, don't depend on Glycema Core every day. I'm just like, mm -hmm. I just tell them maybe four times a week, you know, do Glycema Core, like actually learn how to get in the kitchen 
and, and it's not hard. Just do a few little things here and there um, to make those shifts. I mean, believe me, I'm not a, a gourmet chef at all. No. Um, but I know how to put pieces together. Protein, veggies, um, that's pretty much it, right? So I, I pretty much live a paleo type uh, diet. Mm -hmm. I call it modified paleo diet. Um, but mostly that's, you know, I feel so much better when I don't eat a lot of carbs. Um, and you know, on the weekends I might splurge and have some carbs, but I'm mostly just a protein and veggie kind of girl. Um, and then if I want something sweet, I love my fruit. In fact, my husband came home the other night with um, some cotton candy grapes. Have you tried those yet? I have not. I think I need to. <laughs> yeah, they're really good. Um, and they're at Costco. And so anything new at Costco, here it goes my, my husband works at Costco. So he comes home with them. Um, and he's essential, right? He's definitely essential. I mean, goodness, he's been working so many hours. But the cotton candy grapes, he's, he came home with that and some fresh mangoes. Oh, man. I mean, forget desserts, right? I mean, having a fresh mango, I mean, you may not be a mango fan, but when you have it fresh, it's just so much different, you know? Mm -hmm. So... And we're blessed in this country to be able to get pretty much any kind of fruits and veggies that yep. we want, which is great. Um, and it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't really have to be hard. You don't have to fancy it up and put the little sprigs mm -hmm. on there. <laughs> they, no. You know, <laughs> you know, just we're, the basic we're, we're not stuff. classy over in these bars. We can just eat it right out of the, right out <laughs> right. of the container. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, so we were trying to do some cooking classes. We haven't done that in, in many years now, but, um, that was kind of where I wanted to start. I wanted to have those classes where, cause people, if you tell them to go gluten and dairy free, they look at you like you're crazy. Um, <laughs> you know, you're like, what? I don't know how to survive gluten and dairy free. Right. So, um, that's where we were like, you know, there's a whole new world out here, you know, with the Latin song. So, you know, I was just trying to teach them some ways to kind of get think think differently. And now it's easier. I feel like, you know, now there's like coconut milk and there's almond mm -hmm. milk and, you know, now that how you think, how can that be milk? But, you know, it is milk now. And I know it's, it's <laughs> an oat. There's oat milk. Uh, I don't really, I mean, some people like it. It's okay. I guess I've kind of gotten used to the almond milk drinking over the years, but. Um, yeah, that's why I like is the almond milk. Yeah, yeah. Especially for smoothies. I think it's a nice creamy texture, but it, it is amazing. Um, you know, every grocery store now offers organic sections. You know, you can get almond milk, coconut milk, wherever you go. And it is really amazing as much as, um, you know, as much as, you know, cardiovascular mortality is increasing in this country. There are a lot of really good solutions that you can just go and get at the grocery store, you know, right down the street and, and be mm -hmm. healthy. They're giving you, you know, grocery stores are, are now giving you the tools to do it. Now it's your decision to go and, and kind of, you know, make it happen. And it sense like what you're doing, you, you stick away from the desserts and you, right. you spring for yeah. mangoes instead. I, <laughs> yeah, I like, I like blueberries. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what I like to eat is some, some blueberries at the, at the end of a meal. So. And that can be so satisfying, you know, mm -hmm. Um, some yeah. blueberries and then I like shredded coconut, you know, you know, kind of a little bit of that just to, so anyway, you just kind of get creative. Um, and you know, I used to be very overweight for so many years and a probably majority of it was stress going through school because, you know, if anybody's in school right now, it's just so stressful. Um, and you got exams and boards and I just sat all the time and read and I wasn't exercising and I definitely wasn't eating healthy because I had no money. Um, and, you know, and so, you know, going through that uh, and then I was like, I'm just going to lose weight. And most people were like, I'm just going to lose weight. And how you do that? Uh, <laughs> it's not about eating less and working out more. I'll tell you that right now, because I true. did that for many years and that didn't work. Um, <laughs> so I had to find out, you know, how to do, that's how, one of the reasons why I got into functional medicine, I had a thyroid mm -hmm. issue um, and talk about stress, you know, how many women today suffer with thyroid conditions um, and they go to the doctors and they may or may not have seen their thyroid results or maybe it may be good. It may not be good, but they don't know how to treat it properly. And they just give you meds. Right. Um, but you really can, you know, get your thyroid and adrenals back in order, um, uh, with a few simple, simple steps, uh, kind of like we're discussing today, you know, one via that nutrition component of it. Um, and then the stress of the, we talk about breathing, um, mm -hmm. but you know, with the true adapt, there's, there's another formula too, that you guys like it's a it's adapt and all, and then true adapt. Is there one more, one or two more? Yeah. So, so we have, you know, we look at it from, um, kind of, a, I guess you could say kind of two different or 
four, three phases, I guess it would be. Um, we have the people who are hyper cortisol. So you have high cortisol. Mm -hmm. You have the people who are um, hypo cortisol. So you have low cortisol. And you look at the people who have, you know, one of those with a, you know, maybe more of a cognitive issue as well. And like I said, cognitive is more going to be memory recall, attention, alertness, um, you know, things of that nature. And so we look at it kind of within that realm. And so that makes up adrenovive, adrenal and adaptinol that kind of falls within your, just your standard adaptogens. And then from the, the cognitive with the adaptogens, that's going to be the new adapt, um, which is going to be the hyper cortisol and then true adapt and true adapt plus, which will be your, um, your hypo. And the only difference between adrenal and adaptinol and then the true adapt and true adapt plus is we've added um, the glandular concentrate in it. So some people you know, react better to a little bit more stimulation in a sense from um, you know, having that adrenal extract pretty much um, added into the formula. They, they feel like it stimulates their own adrenal glands when you have low cortisol that can help um, kind of elevate that cortisol that you have. And I love how you guys are incorporating the, the brain aspect of it, mm -hmm. you know, because you don't think about stress affecting your brain. But, you know, now that they've come up with type three diabetes, basically yep. is your brain, right? Your brain's mm -hmm. leaking on Alzheimer's. There's more and more research, you know, coming about that. And so having that component when we're, especially when we're seeing patients to know, okay, well, if you're having, you know, brain component of this, the cognitive decline that you're talking about, mm -hmm. now we know what product, because you guys know with research, um, those specific herbs that are helping in that realm, which is really amazing, which I love to hear. It is. So. It is. I mean, I think, like you said, that's such a huge component of it nowadays. And I think, I think when we look back um, or, or we just look at our, our own families, you know, or just friends, a lot of people have, um, you know, grandparents or elderly people in their family who have some type of um, cognitive issue, whether it's Alzheimer's or, or something like that. And, for us, we want to help, you know, protect the brain as much as we can. Um, Cause like you said, that is kind of the new, new type three. Mm -hmm. And so adding that whole nother layer to this product, I think has been a really huge success um, for us, not only helping, you know, in the present with stress and your own cognitive health, but also looking at it later on in life and what can we start doing now? Just like we look now, what can we start doing to make sure we don't get overweight and to make sure we don't have these certain diseases. What can we do as well um, from a, from a brain function standpoint um, to, you know, to not only, not only help us now, especially in high stressful times, but also within our jobs and our families, but also help, you know, 20, 30, 50 years from now. Yeah, I think that's great. Well, Michael, I appreciate your time today and giving us all this. I love how you just roll it off your tongue, all these, you know, different types of supplements that you're saying where I'm like, oh gosh, I got to write this down. Um, so, you know, I'm going to have this information. If you could send me uh, maybe some breakdown of each product, I would love to share that with the guests that are listening today so they could help understand too. And again, I appreciate your time and I hope uh, that Sunday uh, goes well. Yeah, and thank I, you. <laughs> I'll have to hear about that a little bit later. So, all right, Michael, have a good rest of the day. Yeah, thank you so, so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for listening to the No More Meds podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share your favorite episodes with your family and friends, or at least leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher. The content and opinions expressed are those of the host and presenters. They are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. Product statements have not been evaluated by the FDA.